The term regulator is used in this video in two different senses. The first kind of regulator is a device that allows for setting a fixed gas pressure. The second kind of regulator is a person who works for the government charged with protecting the environment. We hope it is clear from context which meaning is intended. Hey everybody, it's Bill Houston with the Bill Houston Podcast. This is the Merrimack Valley tube trailer theory video. Um, I'm going to be reading from a report which you can get online. And it's called The Black Swan at Merrimack Valley. And you can get a copy by going to tinyurl.com slash black swan Merrimack Valley intro. That's tinyurl.com slash black swan Merrimack Valley intro. So this theory is called, I call it the 3600 PSI virtual pipeline tube trailer pressure booster theory. So there's various applications for these trailers, including uh, bulk haul, they send them to customers like cheese factories, uh, hospitals, uh, universities, um, paper mills, uh, you know, large industrial farms, those kind of things. So these have been typically the end customers that have um, been using these virtual pipeline trailers. Um, XNG is recently doing this thing called pipe to pipe, where they pull it out of a um, gathering line, a natural gas gathering line in Susquehanna County, Pennsylvania, and drive it 130 miles or something up to uh, Mannheim, New York, where they inject it into a natural gas transmission line. That's called the Iroquois. So that's pipe to pipe. Now then, another use, another application of these tube trailers is for use as a peaker service or a temporary or semi-permanent non-pipeline alternative supply or as pressure boosters for local distribution systems during maintenance activity. So that's super important. I'm going to read that again. Another application for these tube trailers is attaching them directly to natural gas local distribution systems like Columbia Gas. Um, as pressure boosters during maintenance activity. And if you remember, Chairman Sumwalt said, A low gas pressure situation is not a good situation for, for a gas utility company because if it gets too low, you lose service to the customers. Pilot lights go out. And it is quite an effort to go around and relight hundreds if not thousands of pilot lights. So that's a situation they don't want to occur. So, Chairman Sumwalt confirmed uh, the need for pressure boosters uh, because you don't want to have the uh, pressure drop during maintenance. Now what this shows is this, this page here. Um, there are at least five times that I've been able to find where these tube trailers have been connected to local distribution systems. And uh, the first one appears to be Middle, Middlebury, Vermont. Um, that was in 2014. And that was with uh, Vermont Gas was the utility with NG Advantage was the trucking company. Um, then there was Roosevelt Island, New York City. That was XNG with Con Ed. Then we had Cl uh, Glenwood Landing in Long Island. That was National Grid with NG Advantage and XNG. Both of those were involved in this. Um, then there was Rye, New York. That was Con Ed with XNG. But also NG Advantage had, had made a pitch to Rye, New York. And then there's uh, Mechanicville, New York. That's NYSEG with XNG. And there are at least three other proposed uh, facilities, Ithaca, New York, Oneana, New York, and Keene, New Hampshire. Now, what we're looking at here is, let me blow this up because I want you to see what this says here. 
So this is a snapshot of XNG's website back from April 28, 2013. Here's what it says. Who else should call us? This is marketing materials, pipelines, and local distribution companies who want to assist their future customers with a temporary natural gas solution while their interconnection facilities are being built or LDCs whose customers require more delivery pressure. We can be a temporary solution while distribution systems are uprated. So they're telling you that's what they want to do. They want to connect these to local distribution systems. And keep in mind that was 2013. That was right after XNG really started uh, first started using these trailers. Same thing with NG Advantage. Here we go. Uh, March of 2013, March 4. Vermont Gas Systems chose ND NG Advantage to supply the country's first gas island local distribution network. Here's what a gas island is. They're connecting them to local distribution systems. So one question that I have is, it's a story about multiple, multiple house fires at home with gas service. Several if you have gas service, service to your house or business, panel. please Speaks exit the, the building until further notice. That's, that's for an entire town. Emergency. Has anybody done any risk analysis? This is really a brand new thing. So who's done a risk analysis of this to see what are the possible consequences if something goes wrong? Has anybody looked at that? It looks to me like somebody just came up with an idea and just implemented. And one thing you're going to hear again and again here at the Bill Houston podcast is this phrase, innovation circumvents regulation. Innovation circumvents regulation and you see this again and again and again we saw it with fracking with hydro fracking the industry created this innovation they didn't tell anybody they just went out and started doing it and when there were harmful side effects to the environment but the smell it's almost impossible to describe it take take a two asses of a skunk in every household chemical and some industrial chemicals put in a blender and put it on parade then dump it out and take a whip yeah. Well, now uh, states are trying to catch up and write regulations to control hydrofracking like New York and other places um, because it's a new thing. The regulation always lags behind innovation because the regulators are, are specifically empowered by the statutes. So if the statutes are silent on Type 4 CNG high pressure bulk haul carbon fiber composite virtual pipeline tube trailers, <laughs> then the regulators have no uh, ability to regulate such things. And that's exactly what happened here. Now, here is an actual picture of one of them. This is Roosevelt Island. This is XNG. Okay, so this is a real project. This is XNG, Roosevelt Island, New York City, with Con Edison. There's the bridge. Uh, it truly is an island in New York City. Here's the bridge coming into it. They had to do some maintenance activity on the lines that feed the island, so they had to cut it off. They brought in one of these trailers as a pressure booster. So they're doing it. They're doing it right now. XNG and NG Advantage have both connected tube trailers to local distribution systems for use as pressure boosters. And this is conceptually what's going on here, okay? So, so once again, here is the feeder line. Here's the Methuen City Gate, and here is the first segment. Now, let's pretend that this is where the maintenance activity is going to be where this break is right here that's where the maintenance maintenance activity is let me move my curse right there cursor um this is where the maintenance activity would be okay so what happens to all of these all of these homes over here that are on the isolated segment well this one isn't completely isolated right because this one down here in the bottom uh, this is the case where we have a uh, a dual feed this low pressure segment right here that is being fed by two different regulators and so this regulator right here would still have the supply 
which could feed this. But this one, you can see both of these segments over here, which are connected on the low pressure side, are completely isolated during the maintenance. So here's what they do. They bring in these tube trailers and a decompression. Here's two, two of the tube trailers up here, and this is a decompression skid. And so they bring these things in, and they will connect up the decompression skid to the local distribution system like so and maintain the pressure during the maintenance. That's conceptually what they are doing. And you always have to keep in mind that 3600 PSI is truly extraordinary pressure. It's 2.5 times the pressure of state-of-the-art buried steel pipelines. And these things are on wheels and they're traveling through residential neighborhoods. Now here is a diagram that I made uh, showing you the this is basically uh, a cleaner version of it of a mechanical drawing that I found in uh, in a submission in a uh, a file submission from NYSEG describing the Mechanicville station. This is a photograph. This is uh, what they call the NYSEG facility. So there's really two facilities there. There is a an XNG facility and there is a uh, a NYSEG facility and it's separated like this. There's a very important feature here which we're going to discuss and that is this bypass path. What could possibly happen if we take this bypass path here? We still see it goes through the uh, two regulators. There are regulators along this bypass path but maybe there's something missing from over here that's crucially important. So changing the state of two valves would put this thing into bypass, would put the whole NYSEG uh, shed here into bypass. Um, and that could cause a big problem. And the reason why we're even bringing up the mechanic bill station is because that it is functionally identical to the portable decompression skids used when these companies, XNG, NG Advantage, etc., connect these 3600 PSI tube trailers to local distribution systems. And so look at the Methuen city gate here. All these city gates have uh, certain functions. They do metering and regulating. They add odorization. They do scrubbing because sometimes the gas is dirty. So they have to, you know, remove contaminants before they put it onto the uh, distribution main. And the other thing is that they have heaters. So what you see is on these city gates is they always have stacks. You see these stacks here, these emission stacks. Um, so that's one right there and that's one right there. So these are emission stacks at these city gates and that's because of the heaters. And why do they have to heat it? Simply stated, gas compression creates heat. That's why large natural gas compressors like this one have long radiative coolers transfers excess heat off the gas onto the surrounding air before it enters the transmission line. And if we look at XNG's compressor here at Forest Lake, Pennsylvania, we can see once again these large radiator type coolers with huge fans which transfer the excess heat from the gas to the surrounding air before it enters the trucks. And similarly, gas decompression is a cooling process, which anyone has experienced if you've discharged a CO2 fire extinguisher. All metal parts of this fire extinguisher are now ice cold to the touch. Here we can see water vapor that's dissolved in the air, condensing out and visible as a vapor cloud, and then freezing into little ice crystals. It's called the Joule Thompson effect, and it actually derives from the ideal gas law. Any changes in the volume of a gas are accompanied by changes in its temperature. If we compress a gas and reduce its volume, its temperature increases. And conversely, if we decompress a gas, thus increasing its volume, 
its temperature decreases. This relationship is named the Joule-Thomson effect, after the names of its discoverers. But the rule of thumb is 7 degrees Fahrenheit per 100 PSI. If we know the pressure of the TGP lateral, it's probably in the range of 800 to 1200 PSI. I'm going to guess it's 800 PSI. Just as a starting point, this we don't have to be exact. And we know the pressure of the output of the Methuen city gate, which we do, is 75 pounds of pressure. We can easily calculate the resulting temperature. So if we take 800 minus 75, that quantity divided by 100 times 7 equals about 51 degrees Fahrenheit. So if we're starting at 70 degrees Fahrenheit and we subtract 51, that's the delta, we, re we get 19 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's still below the, the freezing point of water. And that's why all of these city gates require heaters. And that's why the Methuen city gate has these stacks. So similarly, we can also calculate the temperature drop when tube trailers are connected to local distribution systems. If we know that the tube trailers are operating at 3600 PSI, and if we know that the distribution main is running at 75 PSI, we can easily do this calculation. And um, so here it is, 3600 PSI minus 75. That quantity divided by 100 times 7 is 247 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow. It, oh, let's call it 250. That's the delta. S meaning, if we're let's say we're starting out at 70 degrees, okay? Uh, that's generally considered ambient temperature. So if you start out with gas that's 3,600 PSI at 70 degrees, and you decompress that to 75 PSI, like they uh, our theory is that they did with this local distribution system, the delta is 247, so let's subtract 247 from 70 degrees, and that takes us to minus 177 degrees Fahrenheit. So this gas is coming out of these trucks super cold. I would almost say cryogenically cold. This graph here is one that I made. It shows the 250 degree drop. We're starting at 70 degrees Fahrenheit, 3600 PSI. That's also, that pressure is, can also be uh, described as 250 atmospheres. We can basically, the gas can, you can be up here or you can be down here or you can be anywhere along this line. So the gas, if you decompress, it's going to go, whoosh, it's going to go down to here where we're at basically 75 PSI or 5 atmospheres and minus 180 degrees Fahrenheit. So the gas is going to start out up here and then it's going to slide way down to uh, 75 PSI and minus 180 degrees Fahrenheit. So once again, that's why the Methuen city gate has these stacks for heaters. And similarly, that's why this NYSEG facility here in Mechanicville, New York, which is the interface between uh, a 3600 PSI tube trailer and a local distribution system, also has stacks because this gas certainly needs to be heated because it's a much greater uh, pressure step down therefore the temperature step down will also be greater possible failure modes so one is that somehow there was um, a direct connection of gas of the 3600 psi gas straight into the 75 psi distribution main and as the system, as the gas decompresses within the system, both the pressure and the temperature will both drop. I think a more a likely scenario is that there was a problem with the heater in the decompression skid, or the decompression skid was put into bypass. If that gas goes through pressure regulators, it's going to come out at the right pressure, but the wrong temperature. It's going to be super cold and super dense, and I think that's exactly what happened here. And the other problem is, is that when this super cold gas goes through the, the regulators at correct pressure, these regulators can freeze in the open state. So, and that could cause even higher pressure gas to eventually get through. But let's say, if we just imagine, though, that the regulators didn't freeze and they were only passing correct pressure, but super cold gas 50 times denser, 
than the gas normally would be, then what happens when this gas warms? As that cold gas starts filling up this, uh, this uh, distribution main and it starts trickling into the low pressure segments, what happens? It starts warming up and it starts expanding and it's going to expand 50 times. And I believe this is what caused the Merrimack Valley incident.